Right, hello to everybody who is uh, streaming, who's logging in and getting involved in our social media networks. Uh, this is the first of our isolation conversations, and we are here with Mr. Sasha Lord. How are you, mate? I'm all right. I didn't realise I was the first one. Quite a few. Oh, yeah. Quite privileged. Fantastic. Good. Good. Yeah, no, you are an esteemed guest. In guinea, these, uh, guinea pig. Like, yeah, guinea pig. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that's fine. People like guinea pigs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, in these very strange, odd times where we're all stuck in our houses and yeah, instead of, I mean, last time we actually uh, sat down and had an um, in-depth conversation um, a few years ago, I was in the refuge face-to-face, -face, very nice, over a nice meal. I tell you what, it was May 2018. And it was the new menu that we were launching at Refuge. I seem to remember. Yeah, that's. I was saying to you earlier. I mean, that's something that I, I'm, I'm, I've missed these last couple of weeks is being able to sit down in a restaurant and just eat some food. Do you know what? It's those small things that I, I do think everybody's suffering at the moment. You know, um, but I do think when we come over the other side of this, we've got to be nicer people because we take so many things for granted, and I'm first in the queue for that. You know, I get in my car in the morning, I complain about sitting in traffic, I go to the office every day, I complain that the kitchen's a mess. These things are actually great. You know, we don't realise how lucky we are to have what we think are issues at the time. Um, you know, I think people are going to be nicer to each other. I think we take each other for granted. Um, when, when I take the dog for a walk now, Everybody acknowledges you when you walk past. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, it is. It's it's a resetting, I think. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I, th I agree with you that with, you know, you sort of miss those little things. It's, I mean, it's been a thing in my, in my life, in my head for quite a few years to enjoy the little things. And mm. that's something that I think a lot of people are realising now, that a lot of things don't matter, that did matter before. And, uh, you know, the things that you were perhaps whinging about or were, were in your mind that you didn't like, doesn't really matter anymore. Do you know what I mean? We're all stuck inside. It's... I can remember sometimes when I, I've, I've grumbled because it's been slow service in a restaurant. Does it matter? <laughs> you sit there, talk to people who are around you, your friends that you've gone for dinner with or your partner. Um, and yeah, just I think we're all going to appreciate life a lot more when we're on the other side. And we will come out of this on the other side. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people, that's... I mean, we'll talk about it later on. I mean, that's something that a lot of people are looking forward to and want to know exactly what's uh, what's what's planned or what could be planned and, and how um, how the hospitality industry and culture and sort of, you know, nightlife and everything in Manchester can come out the other end stronger, bigger, better. And, uh, you know, yeah, just that, that that's something that's that's important for a lot of people because we're all stuck inside. I mean, what, what if you... Um, how have you been spending your time? I mean, obviously you've got quite a lot of work to do, but um, have you been watching Tiger King? Uh, uh, no, I'm finishing off Suits, actually. That's oh, okay. quite good. Right. Really enjoying that. But for me, it was... So I voluntarily shut my office earlier than everybody had to. Okay. Uh, because we all work remotely via email anyway. Um, so I was fine with it. And then obviously I knew we were going to be publicly announcing uh, part life was cancelled. So that kept me very busy. And then probably three days after that, it hit me. Uh, and I had a really miserable day. I think it was last Monday. Um, I woke up and all weekend I'd been watching the news on repeat. I don't think that's a healthy thing to do no. at all. No. Um, and I suddenly, it suddenly struck me that actually, we don't have part life this summer. Um, we can't go out. And we're going to have to try and make the best of it. And, you know, I've spent the last few days working on a few different projects. And, and you know, what we do in Greater Manchester, this city region, is different to other regions. And we've seen, we saw it in 2017 um, on the, you know, after the 22nd of May, the arena attack. We all come together and we support each other. We look after each other. And this is what we're doing now. Um, yeah. give you an example I was contacted by Greater Manchester Police last week that said look we're running out of hand sanitizers. I don't know if you saw this or not so I used my platform to say we need hand sanitizer for our, our frontline emergency services Disbury Gin stopped produced the whole production line 
that was just gin, they're now doing half of it hand sanitizer. Brilliant. And it bailed the emergency services out. Um, we give, you know, Greater Manchester operators are giving free hotel rooms to the frontline services. I mean, it's amazing what's going on. It really is. Um, but we're glued together and we're working together. And it's lovely to see. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's, it's good to see that people are coming together, are doing something, because we're all on the same boat, really, aren't we? And, you know, it's it sort of, I think, I think a lot of people have realised just how important frontline staff are. And that's not just the NHS or the police, but that's also people who work in supermarkets and people who, who produce food and, and, and work in farms and do all that kind of stuff that you wouldn't, would never really typically thought. Uh, as being essential before, I, I don't think no, I agree. Did, but now it's completely. The next time I'm sat in my car, and I'm, can I swear on here? Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm pissed off because there's a bin van in front of me, and they're they're doing their thing, and I'm there for five minutes. I'm going to applaud them and go. Yeah. You know what? You've got half an hour if you want. Just crack on because yeah, um, yeah we're just going to appreciate all those people that. I think haven't been appreciated previously. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and so, well, I mean, basically, I was going to sort of ask you um, basically a bit of structure to this um, as best I can. Really, talk about we'll start at the beginning. Yeah. So, for for me and for 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 us here in the office at, at finest, and for most of the hospitality industry um, in Manchester and and in the rest of the UK, the big sort of the biggest thing to hit it in decades was that Monday um, press conference, uh, Boris Johnson, where he said um, that people should stay away from um, bars and restaurants and theatres and uh, clubs. Um, and then it wasn't until the Friday that um, there was announced, uh, you know, the economic package to, to pay people's, um, people 80% of people's wages. So, I, I mean, how, how was that for you? Um, how was that week for you, like in, in terms of the opposition and, and sort of what? Well, you were? yeah. Firstly, you know, I have to say, and I'm, I mentioned it yesterday on socials. I know that your business model and um, so some other business models for people are online is all about advertising from restaurants and bars and events, and the way you've adapted it now to help and support people, and you're still churning out really great content has to be commended. It really does. Um, so my hat's off to you and the whole team and, you know, other online publications that are doing that. Um, so we took, before that Monday, we had two sold out warehouse project events. And I could feel that the public was turning against large gatherings. I think there's a stereophonics event that happened that got a real kicking, actually. Yeah. Uh, so before it was announced, we cancelled the warehouse projects. We felt it wasn't right to have, the, you know, the kids raving. Um, and then the government made probably what was the most irresponsible decision ever that I, I've seen with regard to nighttime economy. They came out and they advised people, and that's the key word, they advised people not to go to bars, restaurants, clubs and things. That was so poorly thought out because advising people wasn't saying you can't do it. So immediately had all these operators with venues that were open, buying food, staffing it. No one was going there. No. And it, it took a few days for them to understand that the nighttime economy is the fifth biggest industry in the whole of the UK. So in Greater Manchester alone, it employs 414,000 people. Those jobs were immediately uncertain. So I think they got a real kicking over that, and quite deservedly. And a few days later, they did come out with a bit of a, a rescue package. And they've done some good things for businesses, I have to say, because it, I think people know where my allegiances lie. Um, but at the moment, is, this isn't a time for finger-pointing and point-scoring, which unfortunately some people are doing at the moment. I think we need to support the government where we yeah. can and, and help give them advice where we can. I think things with business rates, it's fantastic. Um, rent holidays was great. The VAT, we, you know, we can not ignore it, but we can push it back a bit. Um, so there were some really good things. And my first concern was it didn't help the self-employed at all. No. Um, and luckily, they came back a few days later with some support for the self-employed. But then again, I don't think they've gone far enough because I know so many people who 
I'll give you an example. A friend of mine's a DJ in um, a well-known restaurant slash bar. Lives week by week. DJs every every uh, Friday and Saturday. And all of a sudden, his income switched off. Now he can't wait for the support for the first of June. He just can't do that. You know, yeah. how does he live until the first of June? He can't. And I think actually what um, our mayor, Andy Burnham, came out and said, his suggestion, which I think nails it, was, OK, all those people, give them maybe an emergency deposit now of £1,000 to get them through to that period of 1st of June. And I really support that. I thought that was a great initiative. Um, so, you know, they haven't got it completely right, but they have done some really good things. Um, and I think there's going to be some more announcements today we're expecting as well. OK, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean... I pretty much live my life hand to mouth. You know what I mean? I, I don't have many servings. I don't have any servings, really. And I think a lot of people over the last, last few years, you know, live that life where, you know, you get paid and then that's, that's enough to get you to your next payday. And then, you know, you get paid again and you, you carry on doing the same. And I think um, it came as a big shock, big shock to a lot of people um, mm. in, in many, in, well, in, in the hospitality industry on that week. That you know, you find out on a Monday that you, you've probably not got a job, um, and you've got nowhere. You can't look for another job elsewhere because everyone's doing the exact same thing. And so that that, that week was like the week of hell for, for was, a lot of people. It was interesting for me to see some really clever operators adapt literally overnight. Yeah, the restaurants were closed, but then they became takeaways that they've never done before uh, and deliveries, which I thought was a fantastic initiative. Um, and yeah, I think what what is interesting for me is we're going to see some real leaders come out of this. Um, you've only got to look at the likes of um, the chef, Gary Usher, who's helping cook meals for the homeless um, over in, in Chester, uh, seeing this week. Mary Ellen from the Creameries in Shorten. She's putting so much support in now and, and working with um somebody called Corin, and what they did was they put a shout out to all the, the restaurants to say look you're closing we know you're going to have some stock left over can we have that stock so that we can produce meals for the vulnerable and that's happening and that's just the perfect example of how we look after each other in the city region yeah no, i agree and it's, it's i think it's the way that um th these people and the, these these businesses and these venues react to what has happened and um you know yeah you can you might have to shut up shop but it doesn't have to be the end you can continue, you know, as you said, do deliveries or come up with initiatives to help other people. And there's all these things that, that happen. I mean, just us, just me and you conversing now virtually. Um, I mean, that is going to come into play over the next two, three, four months, even more, as we're all on lockdown. Everything's yeah. going to come virtual, really, isn't it? Yeah, I had a weird experience two days ago. I had to, I bought a printer for home. That was the first thing I did. And okay. I, can't, I mean, I can't connect it. I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm absolutely useless. So I had to go to the office. Um, and it was kind of, it was spooky, actually. It was really surreal because we have, um, there's a whiteboard in the office where Poppy, who works there, she's the designer, had drawn a picture of Tyler, the creator. And we had our daily ticket count on it for Park Life. And it was the ticket count that stopped the day we'd be packed up and left the office. It was really, it was a weird feeling to walk in there and just see time pause. Yeah. Um, but I know we'll be back in there, you know, it's not going to be the next couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm very confident, I'm hoping we're going to be back in there in a few months. We are seeing where it all started um, in China now, bars, restaurants, right. clubs, they are theatres, they are reopening, so yeah. I think that's a good sign. Yeah, no, um, I agree, and I mean, we can, we can come on to it in a, in a bit as to sort of how, how we think the... Uh, like what it's going to be like when it when it, when everywhere does open because I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. I mean, I, I certainly am. I, I me and uh, me and my wife on uh, on Monday we uh, put we downloaded off YouTube bar pub pub background noise <laughs> and um, we just had that on. Got some port scratchings, a few pints, and I had that on, but also some music as well. And it was like in the pub, and it was because I, I you know I miss that kind of stuff, and I think a lot of people are, are starting to see that they are they are missing that that sort of interaction with people and that, that atmosphere thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, the, the way this virtual sort of stuff, stuff works, like um, you've started, you're starting um, United We Stand this evening. United We Stream. Stream, United We Stand. See, I'm thinking that. 
United, you're not even a United fan, are oh, you? Oh yeah, but I mean, you, you must have loved that. Fan. You must have loved that being being called that. But it, yeah, I did. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's why so so, that came about. So I, have they started? Did they start doing it in Berlin first? Are they, are they operating? In yeah. Berlin? So um, I advised the mayor on that time economy. Um, and there's a WhatsApp group going on. There's about 36 of us across the world. So from starts in Australia, India, Lithuania, uh, New York, LA, Barcelona, Prague, you know, and we, Berlin, Amsterdam. We speak to each other quite often on this WhatsApp. And it's really interesting to see how some of the governments are really supporting the nighttime economy and culture and how some governments, for example, Hungary, don't get it. They're not interested in helping whatsoever. No. Um, so they started something in Berlin a couple of weeks ago, an initiative which I was watching called United We Stream. And um, obviously the clubs are closed at the moment in Berlin. So they decided to put a DJ on in there and stream it and film it at the same time. It's completely free to watch. It doesn't cost a penny. But what they're saying is, look, nighttime economy is in a bit of a mess at the moment. If you can afford one euro, two euros, three euros, please chip in, donate. Okay. And I was watching this. I thought it was a brilliant concept. So I picked the phone up to Lutz and said, look, can we do something like this in Manchester? He said, well, you can do exactly the same. So we are calling it unitedrestream.co.uk, um, following very similar branding to them. The difference we're doing is everybody in Berlin, from the time you're in a nappy to the time you're in a coffin, you're into house and techno. That's it in Berlin. No one's into jazz, country music, never heard of it. You're just into house techno. Um, what we're doing great in Manchester is we're appealing to all audiences. So tonight we kick off at seven o'clock with Salado, who are a huge house techno act. Tomorrow night we've got Gareth Brooks, who is the uh, resident DJ at Hula Tiki Lounge. He's going to play music for everybody. On Sunday, we've got Slow Readers Club, so live bands. On Monday, we've got Gary Usher doing a, a live cooking thing. Um, we've got poetry coming on from Lem CC, Tony Walsh. We've got a Q&A regarding acting from um, Catherine Tilsey, the actress. There's loads of things that we're doing. We're trying to appeal to everyone. It is going to be really clubby at the weekends on Friday and Saturdays, but it's going to be a lot of live music there. And we just want to try and entertain as many people as we possibly can, really. Very good. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great idea because... Uh, a lot of a lot of creatives and as you're saying like um self-employed and you know people who, who work in the city typically they they rely on all that money and from the weekends from from events and with events not running this is this is the only real option that they've got what we're doing is we're going to build a relief fund um 70 of the money is going to go completely back to help support the people that we discussed before um, people within that. Have you frozen? A little bit. Are you, nope. are you okay? Can you see me? There we go. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear Good me? Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Seven spins going to go back to help people who are really struggling at the moment within the nighttime economy. So it could be cultural organisations, independents, some artists, DJs, staff, freelancers. Um, 22% is going to go straight to the Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity, and that supports the vulnerable people across our city region. So obviously the first thing you think about are rough sleeping at the moment. Yeah. And then 8%, the balance is going to go to Nordoff Robbins, which is a national charity, and that supplies musical therapists to go around to people's houses, so people who may have autism or something like that, that it goes there to enrich their lives. Um, so we're just we're begging everybody to tune in every night at 7 o'clock and almost buy this virtual tickets and do you know what if you can't afford a pound two pound three pounds because it you know people are going through some seriously heavy times at the moment that's fine just enjoy the free entertainment that we're putting on yeah okay so that's that's uh united we stream and that starts uh tonight at uh 7 7, 7 p.m yes with salado 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 i'll uh i'll, I'll be tuning in it's not salado it's salado salado that's how you say it isn't it <laughs> Accent vibes, isn't it? Um, so, I mean, this this sort of this sort of like streaming um, sort of. I mean, we're on Zoom now at the moment, and, and this sort of streaming streaming things uh, going really well. I think for a lot of people, um, you know, it's. I mean, I myself have been tuning into like Bongo's Bingo um, and and sort of all these different things. Uh, Finest, we've been doing little cook-offs and and things like that. Um, so, I, I think it works. I think it's 
it's, it's, it's making the best out of a bad situation, really, isn't it? It is. I also think um, it's going to ch- when we come out of it, it's going to change the way we work as well. Yeah, yeah I, was, I mean, that's, that's what I was leaning on to. I mean, how, how do you think it is going to change? I mean, the sort of the way that people have had to adapt and sort of react to what's happened. Do you think we're going to come out the other side the same as we were before? Or do you, how do you think it's going to, going to change? Um, so just going back to the, the beginning, I think we're going to be much nicer, kinder, more appreciative people. Yeah. I, I am really expecting that. Um, I also think the days of having boardroom meetings now, you know, no one's going to come over to my office to talk to me because I don't want to now. I'm just going to sit in a room <laughs> and, and Zoom them. Um, so it is going to change the way we're working. Um, you know, when we come out of this to answer something that you, you touched on before, my gut feeling is I think um, the kids that go to club events, sort of your 18 to 23, 24 year olds, are absolutely going to go for it. So I think the clubs and bars immediately will be very, very busy, will be packed um, because they, you know, they're kind of, I know they're already climbing up the walls. Um, I keep seeing my next door neighbour sat on the balcony having a cigarette. She's only 16. Um, so they're going to go for it. I do think that it's going to be, and this is just, this is just my opinion. So it's not necessarily right. No. My opinion, but I think it's going to take slightly harder for restaurants to come back as quick because certainly, you know, I think most people now, if if Bojo came on the screen and said, you know what, everything's fine, you probably would think twice about going for a meal this weekend. And so we just yeah. see the lay of the land, um, maybe the same with theatres as well, possibly in cinemas. But that's just my opinion. And I hope I'm proven wrong, but I do think it will take time for them to establish a little bit longer than uh, bars and clubs. Sure. I mean, it's, it, it'll be like, I mean, I was, I was speaking to one of uh, the operators uh, in, the, in the Northern Quarter the other day, and it will be like for these businesses to basically start a, start a business again. Completely. Um, completely. And, we, you know, there's been, again, some really great initiatives. Um, Pay It Forward was one that was launched a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. What that was where you could buy a token for a restaurant, almost like a credit note. So they were saying, look, guys, these these restaurants who were trading amazingly last week and they had, you couldn't get a table for four or five weeks, all of a sudden they're shut. Um, so... Cash flow is king. We know that with, with restaurants and bars. 70% of restaurants and bars, if they don't have cash through the tills within a four-week period, shut, they go bankrupt. So pay it forward is a really successful scheme. And what happened there was you can buy vouchers to use in June, July, August, September. So that was a really, really good initiative that was put out by Roland Dransfield, actually a PR agency in Manchester. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we adapt. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I think. Um, do you think there will be uh, like more of these online events and and sort of? I mean, I remember I do remember chatting to you uh, when we were chatting in, in the refuge. With our, no, was it? I can't remember. Was you about VR? About like a virtual experience? Yeah, yeah, no, a, we did. yeah. It was weren't it? And like, do you think that might come to the forefront? I mean. People are older, maybe the older, older people will sort of like go more for these sort of virtual events and that's something that will come out the other side. I think so. I think there's still um, hoops to get through with VR. But the conversation we had is a win-win for everybody, really. So the conversation we had was, you imagine an event goes on, a really hot event goes on sale at the arena. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a hot event at the moment. Monster Cold trucks. Not monster trucks. Let's <laughs> say <laughs> ticket on sale. We all know that's going to sell out in two minutes. And let's say the ticket price is seventy pounds. So with virtual reality, it sells out within two minutes. But then you have the option where you can buy a cheaper ticket for thirty pounds, put this headset on, and mm. literally watch the whole thing, um, almost as if you're on stage with them. That's what they're trying at the moment. But there's a whole market as well that that will also help. So, for example, people who have anxiety and they can't go into large-scale events or maybe they're not as accessible to some people, 
maybe you can't afford 70 pounds. You know, it, it opens up a whole new market and it, it works for both the promoter and the customer. So I think that's a really some that will be here in the next 12 months, I suspect. Yeah, and I think I think this is this is this has given a boost to that sort of virtual sort of event um, sort of economy, really, which which can only be good. It can add another sort of string to people's bows. You know, if they're if they're doing an event somewhere in Manchester and people can't make it or they sell out, then you can get an extra revenue stream from a, a virtual sort of event yeah. really as well, can't you? Which is quite good, right? I wanted to talk to you. I mean, you touched on it a minute ago about the festivals, the festival circuit, and events. So pretty much every event now has cancelled everything around the world everything's been cancelled not even james bond is coming out like until next year or something so um you are um a big player in the uh, in the city um in terms of event with uh, events with warehouse projects and part life so um part life's off yep yeah uh, so has that been rescheduled for next year next year next year uh- Bigger, better, stronger. Um, I mean, you know, we knew a couple of weeks leading up to it, it was in, inevitable, and it was it was hard to to you know announce that. The whole team pulled together. Uh, you know, it, myself, Sam, Rich have an amazing team behind us, and, and everybody just rallied. Um, and yet, all festivals um, seem to be cancelling up until August Bank Holiday at, at the moment. There's there's nothing really, you know, we can do to, to, you know, it's happened, that's it. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was a, a very tough decision, but it was it was 110% the right decision. Um, it was the right decision to pull it. And, you know, it's the biggest metropolitan festival in the whole of the UK, 80,000 people, and it would have been completely and utterly irresponsible for us not to have made that decision. Um, so we, we did it with a heavy heart. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back next year. Um, stronger. I'm looking forward to it. That's good. Yeah, it's good because I mean there will be a lot of of events and um, uh, event organisers and promoters and festivals that probably won't come back. Do you think it's this is you know the fact that they've had to cancel this year? That's the end. I think sadly, yeah, that will be the case because as with every single year, you know there are some festivals that sadly don't do the numbers. Um, lose money, break even. Um, and for those festivals, yeah, I think they might have to come back and, and reinvent themselves with something else. Um, you know, I, I can give you a long list of festivals that will most definitely be here and it will most definitely next year be a big festival season. That I'm, I'm very, very confident about. Um, but yes, yeah, sadly, I think we will, as with other industries, see a few fall away. Yeah, no, it's... It is, it is sad, but as you said, it would give sort of um, maybe sort of um, a chance of uh, introspection, you know, to, to reinvent themselves, try something new, try something a bit diff- bit more different. Um, yeah, I, I predict. So after the arena attack again in 2017, um, obviously there was, there was the one love event for 50,000 people, but week after that was part life, there was 80,000 people. And it was the weirdest part of we'd ever had in a really good way because you could kind of tell everybody that turned up had been told by the parents, okay, you can go to that event, but I'm telling you now, just behave. Don't dick yeah. about, you know, have your wits about you. And there was so much love in the air. And we did a tribute actually where um, our mayor came on stage and introduced some of the first responders, the paramedics, the police, um, ambulance service, and then introduced Matty from 1975. And you could hear a pin drop when that happened. You really could. And I think, you know, we are one of the very first festivals to go in the UK, uh, beginning of June. So I think we're going to experience something very similar next year when it happens. Um, you know, I think, yeah, everyone's going to come together and support each other. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's it, it'll it'll be very noticeable, as you said, when when everyone does get back outside, and also yeah. at these big events that they've. Some people are, you know, will be reluctant to go to them still. I think, and uh, because, I mean, COVID nineteen is apparently going to be around for for you know, for the foreseeable future. So people may, may still be sort of concerned about attending big events, but um, as you said, what happened in twenty seventeen shows that people come together and, and get involved, do. don't 
And yeah. do you know what? We just we're living in unprecedented times. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know when the vaccine is going to arrive. There's so many unanswered questions. Um, you know, we just have to play it by ear and adapt as we go along. It's weird, isn't it? It is crazy. What a weird sort of situation we've all found ourselves in. Yeah, and you know, I remember I was on holiday. Um, in January, I always have a holiday after warehouse project season because I'm pretty much broken. Um, and I was sat there looking at this thing unfold in Wuhan. And I had a conversation with uh, Demi to say, can you imagine if that hit the UK? Not thinking at all that it would or there was any chance of it. And now we're sat here. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. yeah I, I just, like it's been, the isolation has been a bit weird. Like it's going really fast. Like, the days, I think they thought they'd go really slow, but they're going really fast. Um, but like the other day, I was just, yeah, I was just sat in my front room just thinking, what the what is going on? Like when you actually think about it, it's, yeah, it's. And, you know what? I try, to, we have to follow government guidelines. That's the most important thing. But I try not to think about it because just to repeat, if we sit there watching Sky News on repeat or BBC News or, you know, just repeat, repeat, and we actually think about what is going on, it's not healthy. Yeah, no. In our minds, it really isn't. No. I think a lot, a lot of people, especially especially in that sort of week of hell um, that we're talking about, and also, you know, I mean, that was only three weeks ago. I mean, these last couple of weeks, there are a lot of people out there who are, you know, anxious, anxiety, you know, you sort of are worried about, what's going on in the in the world and how it affects them and how it's going to change their lives. Um, so, I so I mean, there was a question that I was going to ask, which was, you know, talking about nighttime economy and going out and clubs and gigs and, you know, devil's advocate, or a lot of people might say, is that what we should be focusing on at the moment? Is that what we should be caring about at the moment? Whereas I think the answer is yes, more than ever. And would you agree... Would you agree? Listen, it's, it's Manchester. We are 24-hour party people. Anywhere you go in the world, I've said this a million times, if you go away and someone says, where are you from? It's in Manchester. Straight away, associate you with football, associate you with music, yeah. art, culture. It's in our blood. It's going to happen, you know, the second we're told we're going to start partying again. Um, and it'd be really interesting to see how, how it does unfold. We have to be thinking about restaurants, bars, clubs, events, cinemas, theatres, cultural organisations. They are a big, big part. As I said before, this the fifth biggest industry in the UK. So it would be wrong to ignore it. Yeah. Clearly, clearly there are more important things in the world at the moment. Um, but yeah, we have to support it, as you are doing an amazing job with, uh, with Manchester Finest. Cheers, mate. Yeah, and, and, and it's it, it's a good distraction, as you said. I mean, when you do look at the news or when you do read uh, sort of papers online and that, it's all, it's, you know, the majority of it is about what's going on. It's about the pandemic. It's about how people are reacting, about how many cases there are. And, you know, it, it does take its toll. It's mental toll on people. And so I think these sort of these sort of things, distractions and, you know, events and gigs and what you're doing with United Restreams, you know, that these things are going to get people through um, isolation. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we're all, as you said, this is three weeks ago, and already we've all adapted completely differently. Mm. I think I think we're in for a rocky ride the next couple of weeks. I think we're going to see that. that look, I'm no expert, I'm no scientist, but from what I'm hearing, it's going to be a tough couple of weeks, and then I think we'll start to see things level off. Um, so, yeah, we just all have to virtually hug each other and, and virtually pat each other on the back to get us through this yeah no, i agree and um yeah i mean as, as i said the, the these sort of events do do help a lot they not only help um the people who are doing them um it also helps people at home as well doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so i mean we've talked a little bit about what's going on uh, when everything when i mean we don't really know when it's going to be when uh when everywhere opens um but there's one question that someone wanted to ask um sort of it's a bit like sort of your personal opinion really about like people's attitudes and behaviors when when it's all over yeah how do you think how do you think they'll, they'll change uh, in terms of like you know you sometimes more of appreciate mm, like do you think people will take these sort of things you know the nightlife and sort of uh, hospitality do you think they'll 
appreciate them more at the end when they come out than they did before. Definitely. I think we're going to find it really weird. You know, I spoke about, um, I think it was before we started on air, you, you asked me whether I'd been watching, what was it, the lion that everyone's talking about? What oh, is yeah. That? Tiger King. Tiger King, that's it. And I'm watching Suits. And last night there was a scene in Suits where there was a couple having a meal and someone came over and shook hands. And I was just like, whoa, that's a bit dangerous. <laughs> and I think it's going to take time for us to mentally adapt into the way, you know, when someone comes in, are you going to shake hands with them straight away? I don't know. I, I just it's I just know we're going to appreciate each other a lot more. I think most emails now, I don't know if you've noticed, they're signed off instead of regards or thanks. It's you know, stay well, look after yourself, stay safe. Uh, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Did you see what Liam said when we had to cancel Liam Gallagher at Park? <laughs> no. What did he say? His statement was um, fuck coronavirus. Um, wash your hands, wash your toes, pick your ass and pick your nose. And that was, <laughs> that was the official statement that we had to put out from, from Liam Gallagher, which is great because that's just him all over, isn't it? It's just Liam. Um, but yeah, yeah. So but he, did say, he, he did say, I'll see you all next year at Eden Park. So looking forward to that one. Mega, mega, dead good. Um, and so like when, when everyone does open again, massive party. I would like to see, so people are saying to me, what are we going to do? What is going to happen? And I would like to see, you know, I think we should do something that encompasses everybody. So, you know, I wouldn't like to see one big rave because that's just for the, you know, eight, for the kids. Yes. I'd like to see something where everybody can come together. And I have had a conversation with Andy Byrne where I think it'd be really great We've got 10 boroughs in Greater Manchester. And it'd be great if we could pick one day, a Saturday, where there was a daytime event outside each town hall, um, where everybody comes together. And I don't know whether we bring our own food and drink and whether there's a stage and there's bands and there's live music. And I don't know how it looks, but I just think it'd be good if we could do something like that, where the whole of Greater Manchester comes together and each borough has a party. And we thank those people who've really looked after us in the times of need. Obviously, NHS, frontline services. But you said before, Binman, the postman. You know, my supermarket down the road, when I walk in there now, it's like walking into the Hacienda. There's so much hazard tape in there with the black and yellow yeah. chevron. And I don't know whether to start picking off the Weetabix or whether to start throwing my hands in the air and having a, a dance. It's, it's weird, but we need to really... Thank those people. But yeah, I, I'm most definitely calling for a huge party to happen when it comes out, obviously in a safe environment. Great idea. I think it makes sense. I think it really does make sense. Yeah, no, great idea. And I think uh, people are getting, get, as you said, I, I think the next couple of weeks are going to be, I agree, they'll probably be quite tough. Um, and I think people are starting to starting to struggle with the lockdown now. And it's, it's a bit of sort of cabin fever Cabin fever? Cabin, cabin fever. Cabin, cabin fever, uh, yeah. I it's just sort of settling in, so... I you think... know, you're allowed to go out once a day. Do go for that walk. I think it's so important, just even if it's to have a little nosy through your neighbours from windows, just go for a walk around the block. You know, it's great to get some fresh air, get out of the house, because um, it's not healthy being cooped up the whole time. That's probably why they've allowed this. But, yeah... Oh, he's frozen. Is it completely gone? Yeah? It's actually right. Can you hear me, mate? No? What's going on? Is it moving on yours, Joe? No? Right. Um, so, I can't really... Um, I think you've broken down there, to be fair, Sasha. Um, I mean, basically, we were talking about the future of everything, that, and hopefully when we get out of um, lockdown, um, we can all have a big... I mean, that's, that's a great idea about the um, different boroughs um, having a big, big, big mucky party. It's always good. Um, we did have some questions... Um, 
from people on the on on Instagram and on our on our Facebook. Uh, but I think you've gone now, mate. I, I, I don't think it's it's working too well. To be fair, um, so there's not really much point in asking questions, is it? Because I can't get anything back. Um, so I suppose what we'll do is I'll. Um, Sign off. Thanks for everyone for listening. We got we got to, we got to a good point there. Um, we were right towards the end. Um, what I'll do is I'll I'll see if I can get Sasha back uh, just for a final last couple of questions. But yeah, um, if you want to um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully it was uh, interesting for you and, and you got got a good bit of uh, good bit of knowledge about um, what's going on in terms of the hospitality industry and nightlife and culture in Manchester. Um, so yeah, uh, keep an eye out for our next isolation conversation at some point over the next few days. Um, keep an eye out on our Facebook page where we'll our Instagram. Where we'll tell you who's that, who that's going to be with. All right, cheers. Thanks for everyone, and thanks for uh, Sasha Lord for tuning in with us. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Oh, hello. Yeah, I think he's back. I'm back. He's back. There we go. I just did like a what happened then? Internet. Yeah, I have no idea. It's not. No idea. It's not the the technology is not not mental. I just had to talk about to myself for ages. What did I you just, speak uh, about? Ah, just an idiot. <laughs> just, just waffling about rubbish. I, I was basically, I was. I don't want to see that ever again. Oh, people shouldn't have seen that. Right. Well, basically, I mean, we got we're getting towards the end anyway. So I, I thought we could just. I mean, there's we've got one question here um, from Instagram uh, from Danielle Blackledge, who wants to know: Do you think? Um, Events could still go ahead with new precautions in place, or do you think events in the future will have to have new precautions in place? You know, like um, the airport where we've been doing it yeah. since nine eleven. All these. Do you think that's going to be a thing? Or I think so. Yeah, I think we're most definitely going to see. Um, so, just to give you an idea, before we thought events were going to be cancelled, we were looking at what we could do to adapt part life, and it was things like. At the front of bar queues, when you go into the queuing lanes, have hand sanitizers there. Okay. Um, you know, more hand sanitizers in the toilets. Um, I do wonder initially when everywhere opens up whether security are going to have a much bigger role um, with temperature checks on doors. Uh, I know that they're doing that in China, um, which, which is interesting. But yeah, most definitely, I think we're going to have to change. I think festivals bars, you know, not restaurants, but I think we're going to become more hygienic. Yeah. And how many times, how many times do you go to the gents in a bar, in a, uh, yeah, in a bar, and you see someone have a wee and they don't wash their hands, and you're thinking, you just, <laughs> like, disgusting. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, yeah, we're definitely, it's a good question. We are going to adapt. Yeah, and I, I think I think it's it's not something for the next next year i think it'll be something for the long term that it's just yeah. gonna it's just gonna change completely as you said um a little bit of you know you can go into some some toilets in the city center and yeah there is no soap and there is just a one cold tap there's no nothing to dry your hands on and i think that's that's gonna that's gonna change. well yeah i mean you won't know this but i'm walking through the gents toilets at the hacienda you used to have to pull your trousers up because I'm not joking there was always like half an inch of wall that you'd walk through it was just it wasn't pleasant no toilet doors it was awful (laughs) (laughs) all right okay right so I mean that's I mean that's that's pretty much it to be fair uh Sasha we've uh we've covered as much as um as much as I've written down here I've enjoyed it I think you need to explain because it's the first one I get the palm tree that's cool oh yeah in the background. So I take it that's a drawing. Is that a drawing of you or is that Jesus? Oh. Well, I'm connected. So, so this is a, this is a drawing of me from local artist Nicola Fernandez. I like that. It's when I had longer. I look a bit like Conchita Burst. You know, you know the one who won. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> from Israel. Is it? Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then the, the other one is. Um, this is an astronaut, a real NASA astronaut who I met. Wow. Steve Smith. He wow. Came, came to Manchester a few weeks ago. 
and he sent me a little message. Very nice guy. Very, very attractive man. I, uh, <laughs> I fell in love with him a little bit, to be fair. Lovely. Um, which yeah. is easy to do because he was tall and... Um, an astronaut. I'm well. an astronaut, yeah. And I'm big into science. Right, I'm going to see if I can get on Facebook now to see if, I, if there's any questions that I can get up. Okay. Um, see what anyone's done. Let's have a look now. Let me try and navigate my phone. You good shout with the water. I forgot it's water. I'm getting getting the sore throat here. I'd like to. Oh. That's vodka. That's water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Friday night. Yes. I'm going to crack the vodka open up this evening. Right. I can't get on the, I can't get on the thing here. Let's have a look. Right. Let me have a look at some comments here now. Uh, that's yeah. So, um, India, India Morris, uh, how long do you think it's going to affect us for? Uh, we know the next few months are going to be hard, but will this change the landscape of Nike Tam economy for the next five years or even for good? I mean, I think we've covered that really. Um, I think we've covered that. I think the, the one part that we haven't covered is. Um, Look, this again, I'm not a scientist, but I am suspecting things are kind of be back to normal by mid-September, I think. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Um, but then we might get another wave coming through. We just don't know. Um, but looking at timelines around the world, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, so um, last question here. Um, which band are you most looking forward to seeing uh, once we can all go to gigs again? Well, I mean, if the Smith reform, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That would be good. Would be Although uh, Morris has been getting a lot... Well, Morris is a, a bit of a figure now, isn't he? He's... Uh, yeah. Well, you know, do you know what? I mean, I, I listen to the Smiths. I listen to Morrissey. He has said some things that maybe were taken out of context. I don't yeah. know. But I think, you know, Tony Wilson used to say that you should always separate the art from the artists. So that's what I, I try to do. I agree, yeah. Get them on stage and just sing. Don't say anything. Just get singing, fellas. Just get involved. Yeah. That will be good. Obviously, Oasis as well. I mean, oh, that would be great if they came back together. I love watching Liam taunting Noel. They're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. They're good. Well, we'll see. We'll see if he bites. That will be good. It'll be good to see. Yeah. That that would be a party and a half if they come back and away yeah. to the and the Smiths. What 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 I do? That'd be good. Yeah. Be After that. yeah. Right, Sasha, lovely. I know you've got to go. Um I don't know if there's something on telly, Judge Rinder or something, but um yeah. Yeah, thanks for sitting down and speaking to me um, yeah, and speaking you. to everyone else and answering thank the questions. That, as, a, as always, it's a pleasure to chat to you. And um, you. yeah, look after yourself. Likewise, look and, after uh, Yeah, Make, um, wash your hands, all that kind of stuff. And um, we'll see you when it, when it, um, see you on the other side. See you. And it won't be long. See Lovely. you then. Cheers, Just mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers Lovely. now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.